Hey everybody, I hope you're doing okay. I am doing a five foot long canvas and I'm going to do an acrylic pour and well, it's going to be an acrylic swipe. In the spirit of feather dance, so I'm kind of using feather dance as my reference and I also drew off a little grid just to um, give myself a clue how I wanted to actually do this. I have painted my canvas, which was white. I painted it black. And then the flood coat that's going to go over this, the skim, I'm just going to skim it. It's going to be a really thin layer of a skim coat. Artist Loft of Black Flow Acrylic, half and half with U.S. Floetrol. And then a little water but I don't thin it down much because you don't want it to be thinned down so much that your swipes on top bleed out and I've done that before and then the rest of the colors I'm using our De deco art Americana one-to-one -one ratio with the flow trawl no water added because you really just don't need it consistency is really just kind of perfect and then I've got a couple of metallics like deco art 24 karat extreme sheen one-to-one -one with the flow trawl some of the metallics I have a copper it's a little thicker you really just don't need to add much water at all spot-on treadmill lubricant I've had this for five years and still have this left but I haven't done acrylic pours and quite a while. This is a commission for Miss Kathleen Osmore. She kind of left it up to me to choose the colors. So I decided to go with the rainbow colored effect with a few metallics. I'm also trying to decide if I want to move my camera angle. <laughs> this is kind of difficult because it's a five foot long canvas. So let me just see. Okay, I moved the camera to the side of the canvas and it just really was too skewed and so I know this, the further away I get, the, the less you're going to see, but I'm just going to try my best just to kind of show a little bit of the process and you can just watch. Okay, I don't know if I was recording or not. I'm skim cutting with the black artist loft and I mean skim coating. I'm not putting it on and tilting it. And having a really thick layer. I have my pool trail, which is famous for the feather dance part of it. But with this being, this is a five foot long canvas and 15 inches wide, so it may be too big for what I'm trying to achieve. So I will probably paint the sides with the same paint with black. All of my colors are in these squeeze bottles with that have the screw on lids. Comparison of the two holes, very different. You get controlled swipes or laying down color with this kind of bottle. I'm not going to talk while I'm doing the rest, but um, some my metallics are in little cups that I will use and just make a little spout and use that instead of the bottle. But you don't get as much control that way. That's why I use the, the squeeze bottles.
Okay, so I've got this completely finished and I'm going to show you how I varnish a painting and <clears throat> you have to work really kind of fast because this has about a four or five minute working time and it's Liquitex high gloss varnish and the customer actually requested the satin finish but I'm still going to start out with the gloss varnish and then see how it looks before I switch to satin but it will make a huge difference in how vibrant it makes it feel once again. This did have silicone oil and I cleaned it. You can use Dawn dish liquid and a cloth and just kind of suds it up and then rinse it off with a wet rag and let it dry really well. That's one option. Here's another option, Perrier is wiping it down with mineral water. 
it's a little less work to do than sudsing it up with dish soap and doing it that way. So give this a try. Have a well-lit area where you've got some different angles that you can see your piece from so you can see it in the reflection of the light. I've got a wide, probably like three inch sponge brush. Make sure there's no hairs or anything. It is damp. I keep it damp. And when I'm finished with it, it goes back in a Ziploc bag that I've written the date on and I will reuse it and I will not rinse it between. I will leave the varnish on the brush. It just, for me, it just works better that way. So like I said, you're gonna have to go kind of quickly. Don't shake your varnish up because you'll have bub extra bubbles and put it on pretty healthy. So I'm just gonna start here and I just like to go around in circles and just work really, really fast to just get it on it will look milky. That's okay. And with when you put kind of a healthy dose on the first time, uh, you, that, it guarantees just better coverage and everything. This is a five foot canvas, so you see how quickly I am able to just go ahead and proceed along the canvas. Now this does have some bubbles and we will torch it in a minute. I've got some little goobers from this varnish down to the end here. But I'm not putting a very light coat. I'm really putting a pretty thick dose of coat of varnish. I call it a dose. Okay, just to get a really quick coverage. And then with a light touch, you can go up and down. I'm barely touching the surface. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. It actually, when you go in a circular motion and you go really fast, it actually shows less brush strokes. Now this is black, so you're going to have to be cognizant of anything landing on your black. I've turned off my ceiling fan that's overhead. So that's pretty good for that first coat. Then you can take a torch. looking for any little specks. I can always go over it with black if I need to, but anyway, that's the first coat and that just took me a very short period of time. So I'm gonna let this dry for multiple hours, a couple hours or so. And I'll bring the camera over the canvas so that you can see. But I'm gonna do a really quick cut on the sides as well while I've got my varnish out. I didn't really have any dribbles that went over the edge. I don't put excess on where it, it flows off, but it is pretty healthy coat, you know, right on the get-go. So again, I just put my sponge brush in a Ziploc bag and I seal it up, make sure there's no air in that bag. And in a few hours, I'll come back and do a second coat. And I'll also brush in the opposite direction or I'll start going around like I always do. 
So here is a picture or a video of it just going over the top of it. And I'm not in a super well lit room. This this, this studio is about half lit on one end. <laughs> I'm probably standing in my light here. But anyway, here you can see it from the bottom end up, but then it's upside down for you. So we'll go this way, the way you've been seeing it create. It just makes all those colors really pop again. And uh, we'll do this again and I'll show you more. Okay, so I went ahead and did another coat of the gloss, and as you can see, it's pretty shiny, but you do still see a little texture. So if you don't want to see texture, you would do probably at least um, two more coats. One for sure. And this last one I put on pretty heavy. And I really find that if I just go in that circular motion, I don't see as much brush strokes and that kind of thing. So now I'm going to switch to the satin finish because that was the customer's request. So this was high gloss and now we're going to satin. And I got my torch for any bubbles at the end. Again, I'm using a wide brush. It's clean, but it's damp. I always start with a damp brush. It's not like wet damp. It's just not a dry sponge. I'm going to do the same process, just putting it on really healthy. And just a light touch. Make sure to get it to all those edges. Kind of like buffing it on. If you see any really heavy puddles, just kind of buff through it. Okay, and if you just see a heavy spot, just kind of buff it out just a bit. But as long as you work quickly, it has time to do its thing and kind of self-level without it getting to a point where you touch it and it tacks up and, and you remove it. So you've got to work quickly. And again, it will self-level. So you don't really have to do back and forth strokes or, you know, you just really don't have to. And this works really well for a narrow canvas because you can really kind of work quickly down the whole thing. Now, if you've got a big wide canvas, you've got to find a way to work th across that whole surface pretty quickly. So I'm going to torch. I find that the uh, satin varnish feels a little bit thicker than the high gloss. Just an observation of mine. So I put the second coat on last night. It was late and um, I put it on really, really heavy, kind of like this. You could see cloudy spots that looked like light bluish because it, it's, it's not totally clear when it's wet. It's a little bit milky, like a bluish milky color. And I went to bed thinking, oh goodness, I hope I didn't go too thick, but it dries clear. My worries were in vain. <laughs> now I'm going to let this dry for several hours. Normally I keep my ceiling fan on in my studio, but I've got it off. I don't want any extra dust, dog fur, anything flying around um, that will absolutely land on my piece. And we'll check it out in a little while.
so you can see that up close. 